Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of Medal of Honor Rising Sun. Thank you to everybody who's been waiting patiently for this. I saw a few comments asking when the next part was coming up. Sorry, I've been a bit busy editing the lore video, which is coming out later in the week. But let's continue from where we, uh, let's continue from where we left off here. Uh, Midnight Raid on Guadalcanal. And if you guys enjoy this series, please do drop a like. It does help this series out a lot. Listen up, Marines. The mission is to soften up the enemy before the main assault at dawn. We land across the beach, proceed to the airfield, destroy an ammo dump, eliminate any remaining resistance, sit tight till our relief arrives. Any questions? Okay, so Guadalcanal. This was really the first U.S. major land battle in the Pacific. You had Midway, which basically happened a month before this, but... Guadalcanal was really the first uh, U.S. Uh, major battle of, of the Pacific on land. Cover those plants! Get some fire out there! Got him. And Guadalcanal, this is a small island that's a few hundred miles to the northeast of Australia. Did I get him? I think I did. So the scout will... The scout will run to warn more of the, um... Uh, the Japanese. And now what I'll say about this mission is this mission is actually pretty historically accurate. And the reason I say that is because... In the, um... In the... The, the M1 Garant was the standard issue of the of the U.S. during World War II, but here's the thing a lot of people don't know. The Marines, when they actually landed on Guadalcanal, they actually did not have the M1 Garant. They were actually using the Springfield. Why? Why didn't they have the Garand? The reason for that was because the Springfield was still the U.S. standard um, issue. It was the bolt-action rifle from, you know, World War I until the early parts of World War II. And so, um, uh, the Marines actually were a little bit back. The, the Army always got, like, the best tech. And so they got the, uh, they had gotten the M1 Garands first, which actually pissed off a lot of the Marines, too. And there was, like, this little, little bit of a rivalry between them. They still respected each other, they still liked each other, but a lot of the Marines were upset that the Army oftentimes would, uh, would get, get a lot of tech and supplies first. Ah! So yeah, the uh, the Marines on Guadalcanal did not uh, have Garands; they had Springfield. So that th this is accurate. Uh, unlike a lot of video games that you know they don't necessarily get the gun accuracy right in the time period. Damn. Gotta conserve this rifle to running out of ammo here. Oh, come on, no. What the? Okay. There we go.
Yeah, I remember this mission was pretty hard. And you you can like go in the boat or you can go on land on parts of these, but I think it's better to go on um For, got, for you guys wondering, why did the why did the Marines have the M1 Garand on um in uh, the Philippines? Well, because in the Philippines it was mostly U.S. Army, so there would be Marines there, but it would be mostly Army. So that's why uh, they had the Garand in the Philippines campaign, but not in the um in Guadalcanal. Uh, okay. If there's Japs out there, I can't see them. I can barely see the front of the raft. Not all of the islands in the Pacific battles were the same. Um, uh, the, for example, Guadalcanal, this was very, um... Guadalcanal was a very jungly island. And a lot of the battles actually happened at night like this, and so... Oh. Adams, grab him! Pull him in! Something in the water. I remember this. Ah, uh, yeah, that. Keep your eyes open. Remember that freaked me out when I was a kid. Okay, it's more Marines up ahead. Second squad's already on the beach. But notice what the sergeant has here, a trench gun. That would be that would be perfect for the environments of Guadalcanal. A lot of close quarter fighting in the jungles. Be perfect to use a trench gun. This way, follow me. If you guys ever watched the Pacific, the Pacific has a pretty the TV show has a pretty good depiction of what the Battle of Guadalcanal was like. I miss all shots. I love the soundtracks in these games a lot. Fruit is delicious, huh? I forgot about that. You can heal yourself by finding fruit.
Okay, where am I supposed to go here? Uh, you remember this mission confused me when I was a kid so much. Enemy dead ahead. That means it to go first. Make sure to save here just in case because there's no checkpoints in the game like this. Bit of a hard time seeing them. We got him now. Now here's the thing, that's a pretty realistic depiction of Japanese snipers right there. Uh, Japanese snipers would have hidden in like trees and you know would have had like... I, I don't, I would, oh great. Um, Now, the, um, what I was saying about the Japanese snipers is that Japanese snipers would oftentimes hide in trees like you saw in World at War, and I don't know if you would call it a ghillie suit, that's really, that, that, I don't think that term still existed yet, but they'd, you know, they'd use leaves and vegetation to, like, cover up their uniforms, um, you know, to kind of blend in, but, um... So about the Japanese snipers is that Japan actually hated using snipers. Um, and you'd think that you'd think that with like the jungly environments where a sniper could easily blend in, you'd think that they that they would love using snipers. But uh, they kind of didn't like using snipers. They kind of saw them as like cowardly. But uh, where am I getting shot from now? Oh. Secure the vehicle. So they, they kind of didn't like using snipers, they kind of saw them as cowardly. And the thing is, Japan did not have a marksmanship school. So like, basically a sniper school. The Soviet Union had one, the US had one, um, you know, Britain had one, Germany had one. But, um, you know, Japan really had no no sniper school. And um, they, they had trained certain soldiers as snipers, but most of the snipers they used... Oh, great. Uh, most of the snipers they used fought in the Chinese theater of the war. And uh, the Japanese scope on the Type 99 Arasaka is actually like an extremely rare scope. It actually even costs the s Japanese rifle scopes. They actually they actually cost more than the rifle itself. And um, the Japanese sniper scopes can actually see eight by vision, and that is um that is that is uh you know for that's actually one of the farthest ranges that a scope can actually see, eight by uh. 
because most scopes couldn't see that far, and so for you know the Japanese not really utilizing snipers, it's kind of weird how their 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 rifle um uh, their rifle scope could actually see that great of a distance. Ah. Oh, don't don't get in the way, Sarge. Oh my. Oh, wrong button there. So, uh, uh, another thing about the Japanese snipers is that Japan actually had the worst snipers of the war, in my opinion. The worst. Um, now, why did Japan have such bad snipers? It wasn't even just because of a lack of a sniper school. <laughs> because if you, don't have, if you don't have a sniper school, sure, you can't tr uh, teach soldiers to shoot that well. Um, uh, you know, learn learn basic basic sniper tactics. However, though, uh, uh, you know, a good soldier could eventually learn on their own a lot of tactics, especially in the environment that they're fighting in. But the reason that J the Japanese snipers were terrible uh, was because the Japanese gave their snipers specific orders, and it was not to retreat. And snipers were basically told oftentimes to climb up in those trees, so those trees, you see them in, in like movies, they were told to climb up in those trees, and they couldn't run away, so they couldn't retreat. The, uh, the snipers, wait, can I bring this tower down and see if I can? Uh, no, I can't, I guess. But the, the Japanese snipers were told they can't retreat, so they were told you can't leap. So, you know, you have to, um, uh, you can't jump down from the tree and run away. And the thing, what, what a lot of people don't get about snipers is that snipers run. They run a lot. So snipers will take a shot, they'll run, um... Come on, this guy hiding right here. Ah, great. Ah. Okay, which way am I supposed to go right now? Because there's... I'm getting a bit confused. So basically, a sniper will oftentimes run away, and you know the the best engagement distance for a sniper is typically around 300 meters, because at that distance the sniper can the sniper has time to run away, so they have time to you know to. Uh... Okay, we gonna get this guy here. Got him. Okay, got them all. Uh, yeah, I just keep getting cut off here, guys. Sorry. But uh, 300 meters around there would be good distance for a sniper. The reason that would be good distance is because the sniper can run away. So the sniper could take a shot, maybe drop a guy or two. And if the sniper has to pull back, the sniper can pull back at, at that point. And the Japanese hated that. They, they didn't like, you know, any form of retreat whatsoever. It was always, you know, advancing forward, advancing forward. Anything else was seen as cowardly. And so that's why they didn't utilize snipers, because they saw them as kind of, like, cowardly. Up here, there's a film reel, by the way. Oh, ooh, I didn't want to jump down. I fell down by accident, but, uh... And so what basically would happen to the Japanese snipers in the Pacific is that because they were told... Because the Japanese snipers were told that they can't, um... Uh, they can't run away... What that basically meant was that when they stayed in that tree, those trees became death traps. Because a lot of people seem to think the best position for a sniper is the highest point. Like, people who play video games think the best position for a sniper is the highest point, but it's not. Um, in reality, the, um, uh, the best position for a sniper... Oh, let's check these crates. Best position for a sniper is a place where the sniper is a great vantage point, but a place where the sniper can also run away from. So even if, even if, it's, a, if it's a high point, but the sniper can't climb down quickly, it's not a good point. So it needs to be a point that the sniper can get away from quickly. If they're stuck there for a little bit, then then it's a, then it's a bad position. Intelligent documents found, okay. Enemy in sight! 
Whoa, whoa. Damn, that's that sergeant is taking, you know, Arasaka Bay, and that's like it's nothing. Yeah, you get stabbed by that, you're not getting up. Can I go underneath this? No, I can't. So what happened to the Japanese snipers is they would get spotted. And then right after they would get spotted, they'd basically get dropped. So they the, the tree might be like a good place to surprise a few soldiers. You know, you drop a guy here or there. But then, you know, you get spotted in that tree, you're done. You, you, can't, you can't climb down your orders. And if you climb down, you're going to get... And you run away, you're going to get executed. So that's... um. That's like it's nothing. Doing good now. Well, Springfield is helping a lot. Nothing in here. I know I'm going back here, but there's just like a lot of roots in this map, and I just want to make sure that I don't miss anything, guys. It's uh, the way I came from, right? This is the way I came from. Okay. Now there was a... This way here. Was there something this here that I might have missed? Let's see. Man, 
more of constantly getting shot from somewhere. Here, see that? Oh. Hmm. Yeah, move out of the way, Sergeant. Uh, also, the thing about the Japanese grenades, guys, is that the Japanese grenades, um, uh, you could actually. The Japanese soldiers would actually take them oftentimes and just bash them against their helmets and that would actually ignite the um ignite the fuse in them. I'm I'm trying to remember whether they had a pin or not, but the Japanese grenades were a little bit different. I think I I think I might need a tool. I think I'm I think Oh wait, what is this here? All film canisters collected. Nice. Okay. I think I need a tool or something to get down there. That's what I think. have nothing in them. Okay, now I'm destroying them. Wasn't I here earlier? I think I was. Okay. Wait, now I'm getting confused. Yeah, these 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 old school games, oftentimes, yeah, it, it would get like a map like this. You remember Guado this this map I remember when I was a kid, this map confused the hell out of me. I think it's this way now.
Thankfully, a lot of, a lot of enemy soldiers in this game drop uh, canteens. This place is literally like a maze, yeah. Oh my god. Great. Also, um, another thing I forgot to mention, so, even though the Japanese had, like, the worst snipers in the war, it, like, remember how I said they developed one of the, one of the, one of the scopes that can actually see the farthest, but they also actually developed a really good sniper rifle. There was an experimental, like, sniper rifle they developed, the Type 97, which the Type 97 had almost no muzzle flash. So, uh, about the mu muzzle flash is, like, in movies, oftentimes you see it where they'll see, like, a sniper will see another sniper's scope glint, but in reality, most of the time, it would be the sniper would see the muzzle flash from the other sniper, and muzzle flash is basically the, um... Ah, great. Muzzle flash is basically when you fire the gun, and you just see that the little flash that comes out of the end of the barrel. That's what muzzle flash is. And the Type 97 virtually had no muscle flash. Oh, good, good now. Ah. we supposed to go right now because there's like there's like two tunnels right Enemy inside. great
fire. Great, they're behind us now too. Yeah, there's just so many routes. I want to make sure I don't miss any, um, miss anything. Fruit is delicious. Okay, saving here. Make sure that we're good. But, yeah, this is getting confusing now. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm taking my time with this mission, guys. This is my first time that I played this in, like, you know... Nearly 20 years. And so there's, a. Uh, So, Lily, this whole route here was just for the save. I guess it was just for the save. Okay. I don't shoot that when I walk near it. Yeah, good thing I shot that barrel. Oh. The other tunnels where I gotta go then. Okay, we've got bonus objective. Thank you for doing it for me, Sergeant. Um, 
I do like the music. It's, you know, it just builds up. It's very heroic. I always shoot these crates because sometimes there's stuff inside them. I had some 1911 ammo left. No. Yeah, AI is nice weird. Found the intelligence documents. Something to heal myself. I'm not looking good. There we go. Okay, that'll help.
survive. This this is gonna be the hardest part of the mission now. Yeah, this is gonna be a boss battle with a tank here. I remember this part too. Okay, this is the ammo. We have to destroy that. Get on that AK gun, Marine. Take out that depo. Yeah, this an AA gun like this. If you um, if you got hit by this, this would be, this would rip you apart. I think Guadalcanal actually might be the hardest mission in this game now that I think about it. Got this airfield secured, we can get a foothold on this island and start pushing the Japanese back. We're through retreating, lad. America's back in this war. Okay, how many, uh, 45% uh, accuracy is actually pretty good. I killed 167 enemies. Man. When John Adams formed the Marines in 1775, an entirely new method of warfare was born. Unlike armies that marched cross country to battle, the Marines were amphibious, launching their attacks with shore landings. In the decade before World War II, the Marines began to truly develop their style of combat. This preparation paid huge dividends in the early days following America's entry into the war. Guadalcanal was taken and secured with almost no loss. However, swift Japanese counterattacks led to a tough and costly campaign to hold the island. Despite the brutal climate and high number of enemy troops, the Marines, aided by U.S. soldiers and local inhabitants, were finally victorious. Later in the war, the Marines and their unique battle tactics would prove invaluable. So yeah, they're, they're basically the idea of the, the islands, like why they were, it was called island hopping during World War II. The reason the U.S. kept landing at those islands was because they each island would get closer to the Japanese mainland. And so they would use each island from, they, they were, stay, they, they originally went to Australia to, you know, regroup and resupply. And then they would go from north from Australia and each island would get closer and closer to the Japanese mainland. And each island would have an airfield that they could use, a place that they could restock. That was the whole point of island hopping. But um, let's read letters from home here. Dear Joe, last week out of the blue, we got a phone call from a Marine corporal in Buffalo who'd been wounded and sent home. His name is Ray Parrish and he's been trying to track us down for weeks. Corporal Parrish was with Donnie's unit when the Japanese invaded the Philippines. He heard that Donnie and several other Marines were captured and sent to a prison camp. 
Dad finally talked to a man at the War Department today. The government can't verify Ray's story. They can only continue to list Donnie as missing. But Joe, what if it's true? At least he's alive. That's what we must believe now. Ray is visiting family in Erie soon, and he's promised to drive down to Pittsburgh. He has snapshots of Donnie from when they were stationed together on Wake Island. I can't wait to meet him. I'll mail you a package tomorrow with socks, razor blades, and magazines. I hope it reaches you soon. With love, Mary. The thing about that is he knows um uh he knows what Japanese um captivity is like. Is like the American public probably didn't know, but the Marines and the Army had a pretty good idea of what it was. And Japanese captivity was some of the worst of the war. If you were like an American and you were captured by the Japanese, you had very little chances of surviving. Very, very little. You'd be sent to a prison of war camp, and that prison of war camp that you'd be tortured, you know, possibly um uh, they would possibly you know amputate you know part of your limbs it was just it was just you know brutal it was just really really bad the um the you know barely give you any food to get by you know the japanese prisoner of war camps were very very bad but i guess we will wrap it up here guys thank you guys for watching i hope that you guys enjoyed this i'll have the next part for you guys as soon as i can take care guys have a wonderful day everyone